Hi everyone, I'm Marina from the Firebase team. In this video, I'm going to cover how to get started with Firebase authentication in an Android app that was built with Jetpack Compose. I have many things to talk about today. Why authenticating users is important, what signing methods Firebase offers, how to enable these methods to use them in your apps, how to use the Firebase emulator suite to test the authentication service, how to sign in users and create new accounts, how to retrieve information from the currently logged in user, and how to sign out users and delete accounts. I've created a simple app for this video where users can create notes. All notes are displayed in this list on the main screen. Users can also click on each item to open the notes so they can read, update, or delete it. All of the data for these notes is stored in Cloud Firestore, a NoSQL database in the cloud. There is a separate Firebase Fundamentals video for Cloud Firestore, so in this one, I will just focus on authentication. If you want to follow along, the code for this notes app is available on GitHub, and you can find the link in the description below. It is important to keep your users' data safe and secure all of the time. You need to ensure that only the user who created the data can read, update, and delete it. An authentication system like Firebase Authentication helps you to grant access only to the users who own the data. An authentication system also allows users to sign into their account on any other device they own, giving them access to the same data. For example, for many users of this Notes app, it's important to be able to access their notes using their Android phone while they're on the go. Once they're at their desk, it's probably more convenient for them to use a web app to read and update their notes. And at home, they might enjoy using their iPad when sitting on the couch after a long day. To add Firebase authentication to your Android project, first you need to create a Firebase project and register your Android app in this project. If you're new to Firebase, you might want to know more about what a Firebase project is and how to set one up. Check out this video, How to Get Started with Firebase on Android, to learn more. Once you have registered your Android app with Firebase, you need to add the Firebase SDK to your Android app. To do this, you will need to add the required dependencies to your project's Gradle files. Here's a useful tip. Use Firebase's Bill of Materials, or BOM for short, to add Firebase dependencies. This will make sure the versions of all the Firebase SDKs you use work well with each other. After adding the BOM, you need to add the Firebase Authentication Library. Next, click on the Sync button to synchronize your Android project with the Gradle files. If you have followed all the steps in the setup video I mentioned before, you probably already added the Google Services JSON file to your Android project. If you haven't already, you need to do it now, as this file tells the Firebase SDK which Firebase project to connect to. Now your Android project is connected to Firebase, and the next step is to go back to the Firebase console and enable the signing methods that you want to use. Navigate to the Firebase Authentication dashboard and click on Get Started. OK, there are several signing methods here. In this first group, you can see authentication with email and password, which allows you to create and manage users that want to sign in with their email addresses and passwords. There's phone authentication, which allows you to authenticate users by sending SMS messages to their phones. And there's also anonymous authentication, that you can use to create guest users in your app. In the second group of signing methods, you can see the so-called federated identity providers. They allow you to authenticate users by integrating with any of these identity providers that you see on the screen. So users can sign into your app with an existing account that they have with one of these providers. Also, if you already have your own custom authentication system, you can connect to Firebase Authentication SDK too, as you can see in the third group on the right. It's nice to provide more than one signing method so users can choose how they want to sign in. But for this video, I'm going to focus only on one of the most common signing methods, email and password. And I'm going to talk about the more complex signing methods like anonymous authentication and integration with federated identity providers in some of the next videos of the Firebase Fundamental series. The first step then is to enable the password and email signing method here in the Firebase console by clicking on the toggle button. The last thing I want to show you before we dive into the authentication code is the Firebase emulator. During the development phase, you will have to test the creation of accounts a few times, as well as the sign-in, sign-out, and deletion account flows. That's why it's important to do this in a controlled environment, where you won't risk accidentally doing something wrong with the user base that you have in the production environment. The Firebase Emulator Suite is such an environment, and allows you to emulate Firebase on your local development machine. 
To use the emulator, you need to type this command line. As the emulator starts up, you can see the individual Firebase services being activated on the emulator and which port they run on. Once the emulator has finished launching, you can connect your app to it. To do so, you need to configure Firebase Auth in your Android project to run against the emulators instead of the production project. And you have to do it as soon as your app starts in the Activities on Create function, which in this application is called Nodes Activity. There is a lot more you can do with the Firebase emulator. If you want to better understand the Firebase emulator suite and what environments you should use it in, check out this video on the Firebase channel. Perfect. Now the app is connected to the Firebase emulator. It's time to implement the authentication flows and test them. To make things easier, I've prepared an authentication service in the Notes app. This service will handle all the sign up, sign in, log out, and delete user account flows. As you can see here, the service is called from the view models, which are the classes responsible for operating all the business logic for the app and handling the responses that come back from the APIs. The view models communicate with the UI through these mutable states. Every time you need to update the UI, you just need to publish a new state to these mutable objects that the screen is observing, and the screen will recompose itself to reflect the changes. On the sign in and sign up screens, this happens with the email and password that the user is typing you need to update the screen with the new characters that are being typed. This type of architecture is called Model View View Model, and it's the architecture that the Android team recommends for Android apps. If you want to understand more about Model View View Model, the link to the official documentation is in the description of this video. Most Firebase APIs are asynchronous, which means that the response won't be immediate. It could arrive at any point in the future. For example, when you create an account in Firebase, there are a series of steps that need to be run in the backend, and the response will arrive only when all the steps are finished. Meanwhile, it's important that the main thread doesn't get blocked waiting for the response, so the app can continue performing other calls and updating the UI. To handle async functions, I've created a function called launch catching on the Notes app view model. This function can be accessed by all other view models. Launch catching uses the launch block. This is Kotlin's way of calling asynchronous functions, and it handles any exceptions that might be thrown during the execution of these functions. Both the signing view model and the sign up view model call the authentication service from within this launch catching block. So if any errors occur, the application will not crash and the error will be reported in the logs. Let's first implement the signing flow. Inside the signing function, you need to call signing with email and password. As I mentioned before, this is an asynchronous call, so you have to use a wait. This will suspend the function while it's waiting for the response from the Firebase backend. The good thing is that this doesn't block the app. Instead, it can continue processing events, and this is important so it doesn't become unresponsive. Now let's run the app and test it. Before recording this video, I created a test account in the Firebase emulator, so I can now use it to sign into the app. Let me type in the email address and the correct password for this user. And it worked. I am now signed in and can see all the nodes that belong to this user. But what if the user doesn't have an account yet? You need to allow new users to create an account for themselves so they can create their own nodes and store them securely in Cloud Firestore. To do that, you need to implement the signup function by calling create user with email and password. As you can see here, this function is very similar to the signing one. OK, time to run the app again. Here on the signing page, I click on the option that says I don't have an account yet, and that takes me to the sign up page. I type my email, password, confirm the password just typed, and click to create the account. Done. My account was created and I was redirected to the home page where I can create my first node. And if I navigate to the Firebase emulator UI, I can see the new account there. A quick note about user experience. For some apps, asking the user to create an account before they can start using the app is appropriate. For other apps, it might be better to allow users to try the app before asking them to create an account. This is where anonymous authentication comes in handy. It allows you to implement guest users, so your users can use the app without having to create a new account first. We will look at how this works in one of the next videos. Before you move on to sign out and the account deletion flows, there is one very important thing you need to do. At the moment, if you close the Notes app after signing in and then open it again, it will still open on the Sign In screen. This happens because the app doesn't know if there is an authenticated user or not. 
the app is configured to open on the sign-in screen regardless of the authentication state. To fix this, you need to change the first screen of the application to be the splash screen. This screen will be responsible for checking if there is an authenticated user in the app. Based on that, it can decide between navigating to the signing screen or directly to the main screen where the user can see their notes. First, you need to create a function in the authentication service that retrieves the current user by adding the following code. If the user does not exist, this data will be null. If it exists, you'll have an object of the type user from where you can retrieve user information such as display name, email, and profile picture URL. Now you need to call the service function from within the splash view model as soon as it's initialized. Then the view model can decide to which screen the app should navigate next. From now on, if you're signed in and open the app, it will take you directly to the notes screen. In addition to checking for user during app startup, it's important that the app is aware of the user's authentication state at all times so that it can take the user back to the signing screen if their authentication state changes to signed out or if their account gets deleted. To achieve this, create an auth state listener. Inside this listener, add the code that will be executed every time a new authentication state arrives. Use a Kotlin flow to emit the current user so any view model in the app can observe this flow and react to it. The last thing you need to do is add the listener to Firebase Auth by calling add auth state listener. And you also need to make sure that this listener is being removed if the user closes the app. You can do so by calling remove auth state listener inside the await close block. Now that the authentication service is emitting the current user, you can use this information in the notes app view model. Collect the current user state in the initialize function of the view model. For each new state, verify if the user is still signed in by checking if the user is null. If the user is null, call the restart app function. Once the user is signed in, they may want to sign out of the account at some point. So let's implement the sign out function in the authentication service. The signout function is probably the simplest one in the Firebase Authentication API. You just need to call signout, and that's it. The user is signed out of the account in this application. Let me run the application and test this function. First, I'm going to click on the Exit Application icon. To make sure the user didn't click accidentally, the app will launch this dialog asking the user to confirm the action. Once I click to confirm, I'm signed out of my account, and the app takes me back to the signing screen. You also have to deal with the unfortunate possibility that the user will want to delete their account at some point, so you need to provide a way for them to do so. All you have to do is implement the delete account function in the authentication service by adding the following code. Let's test this. First, I need to sign in again, so let me type the email and password. Here I am again on the notes screen. I'm going to click on the delete account icon and confirm my action by clicking on this button in a dialog. Done, my account has been deleted. To confirm it worked, you can navigate to the Firebase emulator's UI. And as you can see, the user that I had previously registered is no longer here. Ideally, when you delete a user, you also need to delete all data that belong to that user in other Firebase services, such as Cloud Firestore, real-time database, and cloud storage. This sounds like a lot of work, but fortunately, there is a Firebase extension that makes this a lot easier. All you have to do is install the delete user data extension and configure it according to your project's needs. If you would like to learn more about Firebase extensions, check out the Firebase Extensions Hub at extensions.dev and read the documentation. As I mentioned earlier, you can add many other signing methods to your Firebase project. If you're interested in knowing how to add these other methods and how to use other Firebase services in your Android app, Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the other videos in the Firebase Fundamentals series.